Hi guys, welcome to my channel today. It's me, Chrissy. Today I'm working on a canvas sheet. It's a 16 by 11 size and I'm just doing a little watermill today. So I'm using my flat brush here. I'm just adding some uh, cadmium yellow and some yellow ochre mixed with a tiny bit of peach just to get that this distant sky in. I've just used a little bit of lemon yellow in the center there for the sun. So I'm just scrumbling in this on. I'm not really paying attention to much. <laughs> I'm just getting my values in. So I want a nice hazy sky, a nice evening sky look. So I'm leaving that to dry and I've come over to my actual building that I've drawn out. I'm using some French ultramarine blue with a bit of Pacific blue and white. So the darker values obviously is without the white. So I want a more of a grey feel to the actual roof, which you'll see as you get further on. So we're just blocking in at the moment just to get all my values in. I always like to get my values correct before I even start thinking about anything else. So here, this greeny colour, I've just left that blue, so it's a dirty brush, and I've just got to pick up a little bit of yellow, so it's making like this minty off green colour, if you will, like you can see there, very dirty colour, but it doesn't matter. It's just getting it on. Like I said, I just want to get the values in how I want them. So this is like the side of the mill, so it's like a bit of a scrumbly shed looking wood panelled type thing on the actual side of the water mill there. I hope you enjoyed this guys, enjoy painting this for you. If you did, give us a thumbs up. I appreciate that. And share out my videos if you don't mind, that's also a nice thing to do. I also appreciate that very much. So here I'm just using my half inch flat brush again. I'm just getting the dark values in between the actual water wheel here. So it's just a really dark purpley black colour. It looks black, but it's actually a bit of uh, purple in there as well as a bit of dark indigo blue. So that's the actual bank in there. I'm just filling in with that dark colour. So I've let me sky dry. I've come in with a sap green colour, but it's a bit dark, so I've added a bit of phalo green to that. Sorry, it was a bit light, so I've just added a bit of phalo green to the sap green. So it just gets it that nice dark value. So it's darker here on the bushes and I've left it a bit lighter up in the skyline because it would naturally be lighter there because it's catching the last of the sunlit sky, yeah? So I'm using my flat brush. I'm going over that again with that nice green colour because this is the actual pond bit. So it's the same colours I used in the trees. And if there's any lighter bits that I've added in, I've just added a tiny bit more yellow like you see there, just to give them odd reflections. But it's that sap green and uh, fellow green. Like I said, just blocking in, getting all the bushes and all the groundwork done. What I call groundwork, which is you blocking in. It is, it's groundwork, isn't it? You've got to start somewhere, that's what I always say. But it's good fun. So I'm just putting the reflection in there, as you can see. The same colours again as I used that French ultramarine blue and Pacific blue and a bit of white just to get the reflections in the actual water of the mill. I'm keeping it dark around the banking because it is naturally that way. So keep that nice dark value around the edges. Bit of a lighter green there, but I'm not getting it too light yet. It is a darker area over on that right hand side. So just putting the reflections in again of that little bush. So more we do, obviously more highlights we've got to do and mid-tones. We'll pay attention to all that as we move on. So same over here, I've got some nice trees hanging over. So same colour again as I used on the first application of the trees. But it's a bit more sap greeny than natural phalo green. But I still wanted that darkness at the top. You want it lighter there because it would be lighter naturally. So as I come down, I start adding more phalo green just to darken the values again. Or you could add a bit of black if you haven't got phalo green. That, that works as well. 
Fair Lord Green is a pretty dark colour if you use it neat and just add a, a tint of another colour. I like you say, you can use a bit of black or a bit of a darker blue if you wish. So I've gone in with a dark grey colour here. Well, it is grey. It's actually still on the grey scale side, but it looks black, but it's fairly dark. So I'll just, it's just use a black if you haven't got a really dark grey. It's more like a paint's grey colour, if you will. It's not too of a darker value. I'm just getting them little poles in correctly. So they draw it out wrong at the beginning as I saw there. So I just altered a few things there. The spindles. They're like little cheese sections, aren't they? Cheese wedges. <laughs> Hamster wheel. I'm using my little angle brushes. I'm just dabbing on some little uh, highlights of the bush that's at the bottom there. And don't forget your reflections as well. I'm coming in with that light peach colour just to outline the actual wheel itself. It's the same colour as you used in the sky. And subtly putting in some ridges. The actual water runs down, yeah, in the mill thing, in the wheel. Use my ruler there to make sure everything was straight. I wanted a nice soft look to this, a nice calm eveningness. Eveningness, it's a word now because I've just said it, of this uh, painting today. I didn't want a bright summer's day and I didn't want it dark, as in nearly dark. It's just like a nice summer's evening. Nice and warm, all this calm, the birds are singing. Listening to the water running, all's tranquil. That's the feeling I was after. Filling in a bit more of them trees. I didn't like that gap there, so I filled that in a bit more. I'm going in with a darker blue just to get under them eaves and the actual shadows of the buildings on the roof. Just a nice dark blue there. I actually like indigo blue for these, this reason. That's the colour I'm using. You can mix your own dark blue. And I'm giving some loose impressions there of the actual slates on the roof. I'm just dabbing on ever so gently with my brush, just scooting over the texture of the canvas to leave them ridges. A very light pressure. Flat brush is ideal for that technique as well, as well as doing the like the wood panellings that I did there on the side of the shed bit. Just make sure you've got them nice contrast, that nice dark in the shadows there. And that actual thing there, that actual shoot that the water's coming down that feeds the water onto the actual wheel. There's a bit of a framework going around. I do add that later on that's supporting it up there. Obviously, it's not just floating. Not over detail on the actual windows. I'm just showing like there's a bit of a window frame around there, but I'm not putting too much detail on that. And this light grey I'm using again, I'm just using the ruler there to put the actual framework up for the, what you call a scaffolding, I suppose, that's holding the actual water thing up. Don't know the technical terms, some of you might, but I don't. It just feeds the water. <laughs> Still with that little angle brush, quarter inch angle brush. Just darkening down there again as well. Now here I'm just glazing over the water, so I've got some glazing medium and that nice dark green just to put the actual uh, image of the wheel into the water, the reflection. So I've let that dry, then I've added a bit of light there just to highlight it. It's just a nice thin glaze again. Just add the reflections. 
So it's light pressure. You don't want to be pressing too hard for this technique when you're putting your reflections in. Just do it nice and gentle and be patient. Obviously, don't go too bright because there's nothing bright in the water that's reflecting. Well, not in this painting. Put in a bit of detail on the actual bank in there. It's like a bit of a stony area of, the, of a wall there. So I've just put a tiny little bit of detail in, but not too much. Still with that little brush. I'm just doing some like movement in the water there because it's actually coming down and running, trickling gently into the actual pond. And another layer on my trees. I'm actually glazing, as you can see here, just a light glaze, just to give it that haziness, that hazy feel. And some highlights here on the edge of these bushes, which I'm going to put some rhododendrons in. So very subtly, I'm not going bazonkers on the highlights. Still using that flat brush. I'm just building up the texture of the trees a little bit more. But only subtle value more. I'm not going too bright. Don't get it too bright yet. Same again on them reflections. And a bit more on these bushes here, because it will be catching just a little bit more of the light at the bottom there. Same here on the water. So it's just a tone down grey I'm using. I'm not going bright white. So you could have a tone down blue. Now I'm actually glazing the whole painting now with a bit of green gold just to give it that misty feel so it's all dried off properly. So I've got plenty of glazing medium on and just tinted my brush slightly with a bit of green gold, which is very transparent as you can see. And it just pushes things back ever so slightly. I'm just adding a bit of glow here. It's just like a really nice peachy colour. Just to give it that nice glow. And I think it really added to the paint in this nice peachy pinky colour. A bit in the sky there. And if you've gone too mad on your trees, you can like, poke some little holes in like I've just done there if you weren't happy. I've gone in with my script line. I'm just putting some branches in. Because we'll be covering it up again. But I just wanted a bit of a trunk going on there. So they weren't floating. You know what I mean. And now I've gone lighter. We're more of a sap green and yellow. But not too light under them trees. You can see I've kept it dulled down there. Just put it in where you think the light's going to be hitting the most. And same on the water here, so it's the nice bluey colour. It's not a bright white, it's still nice, a nice bluey off-white. It's building things up gradually in acrylic. So you just keep layering, make sure everything dries off, and then keep coming back in. We value lighter every time. This is a nice turquoise blue I use. It's really nice in it on that water. I think it looks really cool. So now I'm going to my stiff bristle brush, just to give some more texture. I wanted a bit more texture on these bushes. A bit of phalo green in that as well. In that nice brighter highlight. Turquoise colour. I would use a bit of turquoise and a bit of phalo green. So I've dried it off again. I'm coming in with my rhododendrons. I'm just using a purple and some magenta. And a tiny little bit of titanium white to get this nice mauvey colour down, base colour for the actual flowers. It's got them nice blues and got the soft peaches and the lovely greeny blues. I think the purple flowers really add to this picture. 
I thought, yes, I'm going to put some of these in. Now, if you lose the values, add a bit more dark purple. That's fine. Just keep to and fro in until you're happy, like I'm doing here. Going a bit lighter, so I'll go back and make a bit darker, like I'm doing there underneath. Then a nice brighter pink on top. I'm just using a brilliant magenta there and white. I'm going with my little liner brush again, just put some little arms on that attach to the actual flowers. I think it makes a really pretty painting. And the glazing actually really brings it all together. I like to do that when I'm ready to do my final bits. So I just like to do a full glaze over everything. And it just smooths everything out and looks really cool. Still working that little angle brush. I'm adding a bit more peach though. I want that bit of popper peach. That really nice evening essence there. And I've added a bit onto the roof there on the side of this barn. Another glaze. I'm just glazing a thin glaze of Payne's Grey just to darken that side of that building slightly. I'm checking my values again, like under the eaves and in the windows. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I really enjoyed painting this for you. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. Plus, you can subscribe also to my channel and you'll get notified next time I upload a video. Thank you. On screen now are two videos you may like to watch. And if you're not already, subscribed click on my face and be sure to click the icon bell to get a notification as always thanks for watching and create something wonderful see you all soon on my next video